Peggy 16. Fiery sky shall light the way, and blood shall spill over the wandering world. The spear of Cain shall call the wayfarers, and the storm prince shall unite them. Soon the wandering world will appear and bring with it the spear of Cain. It's a race to the pointy stick. You know what that means, don't ya? Let's war! Tell your cowering lord no one, including him, will touch it so long as I live. If you're set on staying this course, I must choose rebellion. Eldar! Prophecy comes to pass! How's your show been so far? What have you been uh, up to? It's been amazing. It's been super fun. Two very busy days, but yeah. it's awesome to see so many people playing Dawn of War 3 uh, on site. Yeah, it's such a, it, the game has a big presence. You can't see because we're in our you know studio area with, with yeah. we're surrounded, but go that way and there's a lot of Dawn of War 3 and a lot of people playing it as well. Has it been oh, fun yeah. to see people get their hands on it for the first time? Uh, yeah, like it's very exciting because um, I mean we've done this before, we've done the demo at other um, conventions, but it's always really cool to see how people approach the game. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, as designers, like we're always afraid of like, oh my god, are we teaching things uh, very well, or yeah. are we showcasing this and that, blah blah blah. So it's awesome to walk around uh, the PCs and see so many people just like kicking butt yeah, <laughs> yeah. with like super large armies. So yeah, the uh, the demo on the, the show floor has got uh, Space Marines versus Eldar. Uh, yeah, right. exactly. So it features a late campaign mission uh, playing as uh, Space Marines, um, and you play with some of the elites, so Gabriel Angelos, the Imperial Knights, Solaria, and yeah. the Assault Terminator. So it's a really good showcase of what we're going for with Tau 3. It was interesting dipping into it because I, I, I had you know, a work related go on it earlier to make sure, you know, make sure I, I, I tried it out. And it was interesting for me as, as, a, as a fan seeing that stuff kind of come to life. Like, I don't think I'd seen like a fully animated. Imperial Knight with all of those effects, yeah. and it's it's a, it's a real like it's, it's it's a really cool thing to do as a fan, but also it's a it feels like a step up above what was in Dawn of War Two. Yeah, example. exactly. Like, what, like, what did it take to get all that stuff together? Yeah, so the super units like the Imperial Knight is, are something that we hadn't done before, like mm. never to that scale. Um, and in this game, it's something that w was very important to us. So. Um, we created a couple for each army, so you've seen the Beauty the Marconaut on yeah. the orc side, um, the Wraith Knight Taldir, and mm -hmm. then the Imperial Knight Solaria. Um, they're all super elite uh, units with yeah. incredible abilities. To what extent do those elite units um, reflect the, the specific design of the armies they come from? Because the Imperial Knight is, it's a lot of firepower, it's, it's extremely durable, and it, it, it's it's not just a big space marine, but it fits some of the way they fight, right? It's it's super durable. Yeah, It's all exactly. about sort of wiping out an opponent before they can react, that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So for um, uh, like in, in all of our units in the design of the armies, from like the smallest uh, like infantry unit to the biggest super units, we care about them reflecting the core gameplay right. of the armies as a whole. Um, so for Space Marines, for example, they fear absolutely nothing. They were drop in the middle of a battlefield. Um, not fearing anything, they just need to get into war, um, and we'll do it. Um, for the orcs, it's a lot about like tanking damage, uh, about coming in large numbers, about just throwing green skin out that problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas Eldar, like 
their the fact that they're delicate, that they do care about not losing numbers, uh, that's reflected through their shields. Um, and all of our elite units, it doesn't matter how big they are, reflect those mechanics as well. Right, so you can expect that those elite Eldar units still more fragile relative to the other Yeah, elite exactly, units. yeah. Um, they're no doubt big and powerful, but it, uh, you still have to be careful with them. Right. Right? You've, done, um, you've, you've shown off some of the game on the, the stages here today and yesterday. How's that, how's that been going? It's been interesting kind of getting to talk about the game with people here. Yeah, it's been really cool. Like, uh, we showed uh, a lot of uh, Space Marines for a while, then we started to talk about a bit more about Eldar. Mm. Um, and now we're talking a lot about Orcs. So at PC Gamer Weekender this uh, weekend, <laughs> <Indeed>. <laughs> we're showing uh, Orc gameplay. So mm -hmm. it's just a walkthrough of yeah. an Orc mission. In fact, I think we've got that Orc gameplay, oh, which we can take a yeah, look about. Yeah, we can take a look. So we, look. So we can yeah. talk maybe a little bit through or, or kind of around what's happening. So, Because yeah. you guys, like you say, when, when the game was revealed, the Eldar and the, the Space Marines were the, the focus, and I guess people knew the Orcs were were coming, but they were in the distance. So now you're kind of getting a better sense of like how they fight. So like, talk me through like what characterizes them as a faction and, and what kind of strategies do they enable? Yeah. So orcs are essentially the green manic horde. Yeah. Um, so like I said earlier, they throw green skin at any of their problems. They come in large numbers and their presence in a battlefield is by like, it's basically in the shape of a horde coming yeah. at you. <laughs> um, and so there are two things that we wanted to communicate very well with them. One was that uh, they are, uh, Again, they come in large numbers, mm -hmm. uh, but the second is the fact that they are so incredibly and creatively resourceful. Right. Um, and so they make ways with what they have available in the battlefield mm. uh, to create the weapons and the stuff that they need to <laughs> destroy Space Marines and Eldar. So the way that that translates into mechanics in our game is through, for orcs, uh, scrapping. Right. So there is scrap uh, spread across the battlefield. It's either generated by their base uh, in their watt towers or it's generated by destroying vehicles and walkers in the battlefield. Right. Uh, orc players can take that scrap and turn it into either upgrades for their infantry um, units right. or turn it into units that they can build from the scrap them itself. Cool. So a really skilled orc player will uh, accompany their army with Gretchen, who are the builder unit of the orc army, um, and constantly use the wreckage of the battlefield to build units for themselves. Right. I mean, because that's, I guess, the other side of the, the kind of the orc kind of, you know, the fiction or I guess the, the way they traditionally are thought of is that they are quite momentum based. Yeah. Right. Like when they get going, they're really hard to stop. But when they lose that momentum, they struggle. Is that kind of how it plays out in Dawn of War 3? Yeah, exactly. Like in this case, I would say the momentum is definitely measured in, um, in when while they're buffed. Um, and in being able to bring them back to the base um, when they're not buffed, yeah. so that you don't like uh, lose your numbers without purpose. So you got to be smart. You can't just you can't just war at people until they exactly. go away. Exactly. Right? No, like uh, that is um, that that's one of the most common mistakes that I've seen, and it's definitely one that I've made myself. It's right. like you see that you have a big number of units, and you feel pretty confident. But attack moving forward is not gonna. Like, <laughs> because I mean, that, that it's is not gonna solve a problem. Traditionally, there's a very orc plan, right? Like yeah. it's just to press A and click on the enemy base and just hope for the best. Yeah. But you need to be um, smarter than that. Yeah. Again. No, I, I think that's something that's uh, important in Dawn of War Three is for you to be very mindful of what you are pitting your units against. Um, right. We uh, communicate through our tooltips what kind of damage are, uh, your units do and right. what, they, what can counter them and what they can counter themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's important on a moment-to-moment -moment basis that you are paying attention to those relationships and making sure that you're firing at the units that you can counter. Right. Um, so it, it, the same applies to Orc, Elder, Space Marines alike. What are those matchups like? Because it must be different for an Orc player going up against Eldar versus trying to beat Space Marines. Like, how, yeah. do, does your approach change depending on that matchup? Um, well, it all depends on relationships of what type of damage you do and right. what, what kind of um, uh, armor you have. So we have normal heavy armor, uh, we have piercing um, damage, etc. So it's a matter of um, you have a set of infantry units. Uh, some of them will do damage to infantry, uh, like light armored infantry. Some of them will do a lot of damage to heavy opponents. Yeah. So in the case of, like to uh, point out to the org video, uh, that uh, player has a set of shooters 
um, who can really like chop through the shields of uh, infantry Eldar. Right. And they also have tank busters who are going to be really awful uh, against tanks like the Falcon, for example. Right. And I think throughout this video we see uh, a lot of the tank busters just like eating through the shields of vehicles really quickly. Right. Um, and that's because this player is paying a lot of attention to uh, focus firing um, the vehicles with the units that encounter them. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. So how do the how do the super units fit into that for the orcs, and where, how, where do they fit in that kind of strategic space? Yeah. So one of the things that we care a lot about in terms of uh, gameplay for Dawn of War Three is the fact that I wanted to build uh, elite hero units that didn't feel separate to the army. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to build elite heroes that um, really informed your strategy as a whole. Um, and so to give you an example, we just saw uh, the weird boy Sap Noggin, who's a support type utility uh, driven hero. Um, and he can do a lot of damage, sure, but more importantly, he can relocate an entire army from one point to another. Huh. Um, so his role is in helping you like pull off a crazy ambush uh, like we saw earlier in this video. And so what's important there is the fact that the abilities are there and they're powerful <laughs> in and of themselves. Um, but how you orchestrate those abilities in relationship to your army, how you use that to benefit you as a whole, mm. um, is what's important. Um, another good example is the war boss Gorguts. Um, right. He has an ability that allows him to throw his fist and then grapple to a location with that fist. Right. Um, what's interesting about that is that it actually taunts uh, the location of the fist. So Gorguts is very tanky, he can absorb a lot of damage and Org units don't absorb a lot of damage. So what you can do with Gorguts is moving forward, taunt damage away from the rest of your army right. um, and then yeah, basically use it to lower the numbers that you're up against. Right, so it's not just about aggression, it's about moving the aggression around in the right way. To exactly, like manipulate, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, in terms of what we're seeing, we're seeing obviously the Orcs doing... A lot. They're doing a lot, <laughs> doing well. But yeah. There's also a lot to keep track of, uh, particularly as you've scaled up Dawn of War again, right? Yes. Like, how have you approached that? Because presumably it's not just a question of making the game bigger, right? Yeah. Like, we're going saying, oh, okay, we're going to we're going to make it more like Dawn of War 1. Presumably there is a there's a challenge to scaling up after Dawn of War 2. Yeah, exactly. And I would say that the big challenge is in uh, how we scale and how do we make that battle uh, that we've pursued uh, building spectacular battles, right? Right. Um, but a, a challenge that we've been up against as designers is just how do we make this spectacular battle uh, readable mm -hmm. and understandable? Um, and so that's something where a lot of the focus on how we've developed our UI systems has been. Uh, in the battle that we just saw, there is a lot going on. A lot of your units are taking damage, a lot of the enemy units are taking damage, and there's, on top of that, super abilities uh, playing a big role. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it, I would say that as the game has grown, we definitely had to innovate in how we communicated um, yeah. what is going on to players. Um, I would say a, a big uh, a big reflection of that effort was in the unit selection system, which is at the bottom of the screen. So that communicates to the player uh, all of the units that they have in their army and their status. Yeah. Are they taking damage? Are they currently in combat, idling, etc.? Mm -hmm. um, it's one example. Yeah, interesting. Like, you've also got the element, um, particularly with the super units, of you know manually aimed abilities that we've seen a little bit of it here as well, but the one that struck struck me is it, like the two different powers the Imperial Knight has with the targeted missiles and also the kind of wide yes. spread, uh, the, uh, like the cannon fire. Yeah. Like that requires a bit of additional like, not twitch skill necessarily, but it requires an additional level of like technical execution in the middle of a battle. Oh yeah. Is, how, how is that balanced against the need to kind of manage your army as alongside, you know, correctly aiming the abilities on your biggest units? Yeah, well, it's certainly challenging. Um, like, I've seen very skilled players be able to manage a large army at the same time that they are managing their elite heroes. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, uh, I believe that it's a choice that you're constantly making. Like right. Your army can be capable on its own if it's tactfully placed in the battlefield, and then you can focus on, on your heroes. Um, but you can also um, sort of forget about, you can rely a lot more on your heroes uh, yeah. to br bring them forward, do most of the damage, focus on using their abilities, etc. Um, but I feel that when you're most successful is when you're able uh, to coordinate a strategy between how you're using your elite hero abilities um, and the rest of your army. Yeah. Um, 
a good example, well, there's good examples everywhere, but one of them is that with the Wraith Knight, for example, the ranged Wraith Knight, who's a hero on the Eldar army, he has an ability that can pull a bunch of enemies towards a center. Right. Um, and so that ability is useless if you don't coordinate it with the rest of your army yeah. to do damage to the units that are yeah, pulling or in. Or splitting them up suits you. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so this is so strategic. And I guess a lot yeah. of that stuff is, is mitigated by like quite long cooldowns as well, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's punishing to miss. Exactly, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's a question that we get asked a lot is um, how do we, like, how do you balance the fact that these units that are super powerful are called into the battle? Yeah. Um, so it's one of the things that we need to talk about is the fact that, yes, those units are very, very powerful, but they do not mean like a straight up win uh, once they've been called in. Mm. Uh, they are easily counterable and they can be controlled like I've seen Solaria been taken down by uh, being tied up by a bunch of uh, elder banshees yeah and then just shadow specters like focus firing at her because they chop through her armor mm. um, so it's it's more a matter of uh, when you're bringing those units in and how are you assessing the environment in which you're bringing them into a know whether you can survive. The, that, that, that scenario kind of occurred to me because when I started playing early for the first time playing with the Imperial the night is is that's cool. It's kind of, yeah, so, you, you, know, this you kind of want the power of it. It feels <laughs> yeah. amazing. But actually, getting tied down by banshees is a real issue. Like when, oh, yeah. when those smaller units get underneath the guns and you can't necessarily like deal with them quickly or easily, or yeah. you don't have any other units to bail them out. That was genuinely a moment of, oh, I'm not indestructible just because I'm just because I'm giant. Huge. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. It's kind of interesting, you know, yeah. having to still consider. I can't just press a button and use an ability to get out of this. Like I have to now reposition and rethink how exactly. I approach. Yeah. yeah, and you have to almost rely on the rest of your army to like take that fire off of her and allow her to move around so that she can do her thing. Yeah. So. Gatling guns also help, though. You know. Yes, they, they, they do. Yeah. Um, Tell you what, we could yeah. rerun the orc mission footage. I guess there's no reason for people not to get a second look at yeah, that. Yeah, that's great. Presuming that they're yeah. not going to, you know, have a riot in chat if you don't, for some reason, want to see more orcs blowing stuff up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I think that's going to be nobody surprised nobody's um, running yeah. yeah nobody's running yet we'll find Great. out i was gonna ask so you guys have worked with games workshop for a long time yeah because this is after all dawn of war three and you've also made space marine in that time as well yeah. like um what is that like working relationship like now like like you've been doing it for so long you're obviously trusted with their like best toys like how yeah. does that all work um, so it's been in my experience absolutely great to work with them um, we like Games Workshop obviously has a lo lot of love for Warhammer 40k mm -hmm. um, and as a studio we've been developing this franchise for years and uh, we are in love with it um, yeah. and that really shows and goes into the game that we've developed. Mm. In terms of uh, like development wise uh, they are very involved in that we talk a lot about what we're building, what our intentions are um, but it's been great to work with them because they've allowed us the freedom to create, for example, an Imperial Knight unit yeah. uh, as, a as a part of a Space Marine army. Yeah. So that's been great, and I hope that relationship could, can keep that way. And I future. mentioned it earlier, but you guys have the job of taking basically a miniature, like what is this, a static miniature, really a really detailed, interesting miniature with cool fiction, but making yeah. it look and sound right and yeah. move right and. You know, from playing it, I, I definitely think you've, you've done that. But like, yeah. is that a challenge? Like, for, uh, both in terms of gameplay design, like making sure it feels right to play with, yeah. but also making it you know look right when it moves across the battlefield. Yeah, no, and absolutely, that's a great question, and it's something that came up earlier uh, as one of the talks that we yeah. gave. Uh, somebody was asking, uh, like, what do we mean by the fact that we care a lot about the the creating a story behind Warhammer 40k? Mm. And um, I think. Uh, what it means to us is that it goes beyond just telling a story or focus a, on narrative. It goes about how do we create, how would, how do we take this world of Warhammer 40k and actually tell a story about who these characters are, right? Yeah. Like from the silliest Gretchen to like war boss Gorguts, what's their story, what's their purpose, what mm. do they do in that world? Um, and that's something that uh, has been really cool to explore a lot further yeah. in Dawn of War 3. Um, if you like watch this uh, gameplay playthrough and just pay attention to the dialogue, mm. uh, you can sense how much life is brought into the armies just by giving, uh, like, exploring the depth of their personality. Mm. Um, and I love that moment at the end of the trailer where the Gretchen sort of uh, yeah. are thrown yeah, <laughs> into yeah. the battle. <laughs> it's, it's, I guess this is, so. I mean, I'm interested in unpicking a little bit what the orcs role is i guess because mm -hmm. you know obviously the, the what from what you've, you've shown of the plot and the thrust of the plot obviously the elder have a huge role to play in it 
as mm. do the Space Marines. Orcs are often like the wild card of Warhammer, right? Like yeah. they, they don't necessarily know what's going on. Yeah. They just charge at it. They just right? charge, yeah. Right? Like, so what is it like building in a story for Orcs? Because, you know, yeah. most Orc stories are we charged in a straight line and it either went well or it didn't. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, it's just exploring the this notion of what they feel compelled for, right? right. Like Orcs, um, like, and this is something re that's reflected in this, their mechanic. Mm. They're, they're just fascinated by creating and crafting artifacts, right? Yeah. And they're fascinated by artifacts and they're like very greedy and that whatever they can own they want it uh, so yeah. that it can help them like war and <laughs> go yeah. to war yeah, yeah um but what's interesting is that like how do you uh, how do you take that notion um of a, a faction that is led with by um, this ambition of endless war mm -hmm. um and put them up to a, a, a challenge right yeah. like what happens when everybody's um when not only theirs but also everybody's um existence is a threat yeah for example um and so i don't know i love this uh, I, I love that trailer that uh that people people picked up on the fact that gorgas reflects as a spear as a pointy stick yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is i wonderful. think that's one of the big takeaways from the Oh, it's, it's it's lovely, but yeah, I think uh, that's what tells a big story. It's just the fact that yes, they are incredibly um, driven to acquire this yeah. like pointy stick, as silly as it sounds. But you can see the scale of war that they're willing to bring forward to obtain yeah. uh, to meet their goals. Yeah, that's super cool. They're sort of they're they're the silly they're the silliest and also some days the most threatening faction at the same time, which is kind of an interesting yeah exactly mix. Like yeah, do you, I mean we, you saw at the end of that trailer the the turn of the Gretchen bomb, I, I guess, in, <laughs> missile. Yeah. Um, is that like, was when you were designing the faction, getting a little bit of that kind of like orc humor into the, the design of the units? Oh, absolutely. Uh, priority? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's, uh, it, it plays a huge role. Um, the, the fact that the orcs are essentially the comic relief of the Warhammer yeah. 40k fantasy uh, is something that we knew that needed to be part of the game, not only from a narrative standpoint, right. but also um, in the in the sound design and also in their mechanics, right? right. Like if you see the Death Cup does um, with like the blades that they have in the front, it's just so choppy and it's too heavy for them to be able to fly properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's just, yeah. Bless them. So, yeah, they're exactly. Bless them. They try. They yeah, yeah, they're almost sweet if they weren't trying to kill everybody. Exactly. Yeah. But I love this. Um, so this is something that um, uh, our creative director Phil talks a lot about. Is the fact that um, if you're seeing it from outside, uh, you look at orcs and they are the comic relief and mm. they're like kind of like hilarious on yeah. their own. But if you were part of that universe, you would be absolutely. Horrifying, horrifying of them, yeah. terrified of them because yeah. they will murder everything that stands in their way and they have like no mercy like even between each other right yeah, like, yeah. so awesome um, well Kara, thank you so much for bringing some more of the game to show on the live stream yeah and, absolutely it's my pleasure and for bringing the game to the show because uh, you know i know it's gone down really well here so enjoy the rest of your afternoon thank at you the weekender and i guess we'll catch up with dawn of war 3 pretty soon pretty soon yeah, yeah. all right thank you